Today I'm going to share my experience on MasterChef and the tea is piping hot. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Brie. I was on MasterChef season 10 and season 12, All Stars. I made it to the top eight on season 10 and the top 13 on season 12. I actually auditioned for the show prior to season 10 and it was a disaster. I saw an advertisement for the auditions. They were gonna be held in my city, so I thought I would go. That was kind of when my love for cooking was starting to blossom. The instructions were to bring a dish and that you would have three minutes to plate it. So I bring this lobster dish that I made. It's in a Tupperware container. In all the cooking shows that I've seen, they have the plates and everything there. So it didn't even cross my mind. I go into the room. Basically, they just say your time starts now. Everybody around me starts busting out all of these plates, plating tongs, and this and that. And I was like, oh my god. I didn't even have time to register what was happening. I just took the Tupperware lid off and put it underneath and stood there for the entire three minutes. Then the judge guy, it, it wasn't Gordon Ramsay or anything, but he starts coming around. And when he gets to mine, he just looks at it and looks at me. I just kind of told him how I would have plated it and that I didn't know we had to bring our own plates. Probably the most embarrassing part of it, there was a team photographing all of our dishes. When they got mine and were bringing it over to the photography area, in my head I was like, really, you don't have to photograph it, it's okay, like just send me on my way. <laughs> I didn't come back to audition for season 10 until several years later, but by that time, let me tell you, I had the best looking plates. I had my gold plating tongs that you may see me use in a lot of my videos on social media. I was ready and sure enough, I got on the show and made it pretty far. For the audition in front of the judges, I was making salmon ironically. <laughs> my hands were so shaky that I cut my finger three times. I would be stirring my beurre blanc and like the medic would be bandaging my finger. <laughs> so that's really awkward. They didn't show that though. There is so much that's filmed that they don't show. For example, on season 10, they filmed all of this b-roll of me walking around with my dog. They even got him like an outfit to wear because he he does wear outfits. They didn't show any of that. If you go back and really look at the background of the audience, like you can see me holding him in a few clips, but yeah. It was really funny that they paired Fred and I together in the same group. We were not shocked at all. Fred and I were the ones to get the aprons in our group. I'm hiding my face because I'm literally laughing. So for TV, you can't wear anything with the logo. You can't wear anything with a busy pattern or stripes because it'll look off on camera. High heels and such. We were allowed to change, thankfully, really quick right before the actual cook. On season 12, since I kind of knew this rule, you're stressed, you don't really want to be like changing shoes. So I was like, okay, I'm only going to bring shoes that I'm comfortable walking and running in. Second, I wanted to just kind of answer questions that you guys ask me a lot. If I leave anything out, just let me know in the comments. Question number one, that I get asked the most, what was Gordon Ramsay really like? And honestly, I can't say enough great things about him. He is like a superhuman, I swear. He wakes up super, super early gets his stuff done, uh, films all day, still makes time for his family. If you guys have seen Harry Potter, which I'm a huge fan of, it's kind of like when Hermione gets the necklace that allows her to go back in time and kind of be in two places at once. I swear that Gordon Ramsay has that. <laughs> Seriously, he's so inspiring because he works so hard and that's why he's so successful. As far as like the yelling and the insults. It's a potato, you donut. Okay, okay. He's so passionate and just genuinely like wants us to do well. So when we don't, it's frustrating for him. Just cook the salmon beautifully. Yeah. That's what I'm yes, saying. I don't Especially when it represents his name. What's my favorite thing to cook? That's really hard to answer because it's constantly changing as I'm learning new techniques and learning about new ingredients, etc. I love French cuisine in general. I love anything with a really modern twist, a sciencey molecular gastronomy kind of vibe. 
so up my alley. Shellfish is always a big go-to for me. I love scallops. Some of you may remember my scallop dish that I made on the show for Grant Ackett's. That was the best day ever, even though I didn't win, but it's okay. I still got recognition from Grant and Gordon, and that was amazing. You made your own caviar, and so it's a unique caviar because it goes actually beautiful with the sweetness of those uni. The whole thing screams of a umami with the ponzu and with the uni and that brininess from the scallop. Great job. That was an experience, honestly, that I will never forget. Do I still talk to Fred? Yes, of course. We just got back from Hawaii. We were also there with Dara, who we became friends with on season 12. He does live in California and I'm in Texas. At one time I was gonna move out there, but then the pandemic hit and that's enough said about that. <laughs> what was my audition dish for season 10? Salmon with honey caviar, asparagus, white wine braised leeks, and beurre blanc. I wanted it to be a lot of components just to kind of demonstrate technique and also just to have a fully, fully composed dish. So I was a little bit bummed that they didn't show it, but I did remake it and post it on my Instagram. Is the time real? Yes, the time is very real. It's very stressful. They don't even have to create drama because when somebody's trying to do their best, and they know that millions of people are watching and they're under a time constraint, drama is bound to unfold naturally. Do we know what we're making ahead of time? No, we don't. We have no clue, especially for the mystery boxes. That's truly a surprise. You do have like a few minutes to kind of think about what you wanna make, but the thing is, you don't know what's gonna be in the pantry, so that makes it difficult and that's actually what happened I'm not gonna play the blame game, like I I had the worst dish, but on season 12, when I got eliminated, the reason why my dish was so poorly put together is mainly because that's not what I was hoping to make at all. What I wanted to make was like a steamed white fish in a beautiful bamboo steamer with like lemongrass and aromatics, and surely they'll have a white fish in the pantry, but no. They didn't. They either had a catfish, which I would have had to fillet, and that wasn't happening. They also had salmon, so rather than thinking up a whole new concept for my dish, I just went with the salmon, and it sounded okay in my head, but it just ended up looking like salmon with noodles, which is like an insult to Vietnamese cuisine. Honestly, I wish that we had had time to just like explore the pantry because they had some really cool ingredients, but every time I was in there, it was rushed and they would also change out the ingredients a lot. I never really knew like every single thing that was in there, but they had some cool stuff. How long did it take to film the season? It took about two months i would say um start to finish and that's filming almost every day when i went back for season 12 one thing i said right away to the producers is you're not gonna get one tear out of me you will not get one tear out of me tonight <laughs> i can't believe tears. he did this so not only was i stronger in my culinary skills but i was also just stronger as a human being. So I really wanted to make sure that that showed through. Strength includes being able to handle critique and appreciating it and learning from it rather than taking it personally. A lot of people ask what I'm doing now and what's next for me. I do a lot with social media these days. Prior to this, I wasn't doing culinary full time, but I am now, which is really exciting. I am an artistic person, which is why I love the plating aspect of cooking, but I also really enjoy like photography and cinematography. I love doing videos of cooking. So I work with brands and for me, it's a way to be creative and make money at it. So trying to definitely keep that going. I also do events like pop-ups with, of course, Fred and other contestants. A lot of people ask if I want to open up my own restaurant. 
right now no i would say definitely not honestly i'm just in my travel era and i just don't want to be tied down to one location so that's why i love doing pop-ups i just got back from new york i was able to stage in a two-star michelin restaurant which was an amazing experience with my culinary journey a lot of my inspiration came from travel and it still does so that is why I just want to continue traveling, continue learning. I'm just a sponge right now. And uh, maybe one day way later I'll open a restaurant, but it's not really a goal of mine right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay tuned for future videos.